Today we move from the season of Easter in which we remember and rejoice in Jesus' resurrection and the new things God is doing in the world to remember Jesus' ascension. We do so turning to the book of Acts this morning and by way of introduction we note that the book, the Acts of the Apostles, shares authorship with the Gospel according to Luke. The author originally intended that both would go together, the Gospel according to Luke, giving testimony to Jesus' life, his ministry, his teaching, his death and resurrection, and then following the book of Acts, giving testimony to how Jesus' followers in those early days sought to follow his example and spread the good news to the ends of the earth. So let us listen now as the author takes us into those first days of the early church. Let us listen for God's word to us this morning. In the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? Jesus replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up, Toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, whom has been taken from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying, Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O Holy One, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable to you, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So here we are, deep in the midst of transition, with hearts full of love and gratitude. My family and I are preparing for what's next. We're preparing to say goodbye to all of you in just a week's time. We're preparing to move, to start new jobs, to begin a new chapter in our lives. The love 
and support that you have all shown us during this time is unparalleled. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I can't say it enough. Thank you. Yet, even as we say goodbye, I'm acutely aware that you too, as a family of faith, don't do that to me, Heather. Don't do that to me. I'm going to lose it by the end of this sermon. Don't start me now. I'm acutely aware that you all, as a family of faith, are also preparing to start a new chapter to welcome a new pastor in just a few short weeks. It's really happening. Her stuff is already in the office, I promise. <laughs> new chapters in life, whether they be new jobs, new schools, new relationships, or new opportunities of another sort, often bring with them a flood of emotion excitement about what is to come, anxiety about the uncertainties ahead, and grief and sadness for the relationships and the opportunities that are changing or ending or morphing into something new. I suspect that Jesus' early disciples had all these emotions and more as they watch Jesus ascend into heaven, as they watch the cloud of divine presence take Jesus from their sight, as they embarked on a new chapter in their lives. Until the day of Jesus' ascension, those early disciples had done their best to faithfully live out their calling, to be disciples, to be learners, to be students, to be followers of Jesus' example. But as scripture reveals to us, just before his ascension, Jesus issues a new call to the disciples. He says, you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Jesus calls the disciples to become holy and completely witnesses, apostles, messengers of God, proclaiming the good news of new life made possible through Christ, carrying God's love and God's desires for wholeness to all people. And there to be witnesses, not only at home, in Jerusalem and Judea and in the neighboring country of Samaria, but to the ends of the earth. It's no small call. It's a big call. It's a grand new chapter in their lives. And as soon as the call is issued, as soon as that first sentence is written in that new chapter, the disciples watch as Jesus ascends. Suddenly, their faithful teacher and leader is no longer physically, bodily, by their side. So I can only imagine the fullness of their emotions in that moment. But I am sure there was grief and sadness as they saw Jesus depart. I'm sure there was excitement, for they had this great opportunity to spread God's love. And I'm sure there was anxiety, for it was an enormous call. They must have known that. They must have known that their reception was uncertain. If I had been one of those early disciples facing such a grand new chapter with all those emotions swirling within me, I am certain, certain, that my first instinct would have been to start making to-do lists and checking my calendar and scheduling out how I was going to do this grand new thing. How am I so certain? Because... Shocker to no one, that's what I'm doing right now. This big new chapter ahead, new job, new home, new community, a big move. My to-do list and calendar have never been so glued to my hand. But strikingly, 
While the early disciples may have had the same instinct I do, that many of us do in a culture which ascribes worth based on achievement and rewards those who are seemingly the most productive, the early disciples choose a different path as they begin the new chapter before them. They calmly return to Jerusalem. When they enter the city, they gather in an upper room, and there, scripture tells us, they constantly devote themselves to prayer. In this, they were following Jesus' example. Before Jesus went start, and to start his public ministry, he went away to pray in the wilderness. Before Jesus faced his time of betrayal, denial, death, and resurrection, he went away to pray in the garden. Time and again, Jesus modeled the importance of prayer when embarking on a new chapter in life. And so the early disciples follow that example, devoting themselves to prayer. French philosopher Simone Ville says prayer at its heart is attention. Attention to God. Attention to God's presence, to God's leading, to God's desires made known through scripture, through the mystery of silence, through the witness of the faithful of every time and place, and through the stirring of the Holy Spirit in this time and place. Prayer, attention to God's presence and leading is an important discipline of faith at all times, but particularly in the tender times of new beginnings. Beloved people of God, with new chapters in faith and life before us, what might it look like for us? to follow Jesus' example, to follow the early disciples' example, and in these days, constantly devote ourselves to prayer. How might each of us pay more attention, deeper attention, fuller attention to God's presence, to God's leading, as these new chapters begin? Can your morning cup of coffee or the red traffic lights along that commute, or an afternoon walk, be your call to prayer, your call to attention, to notice what God is doing and asking of you. Can the moments when you recognize excitement, anxiety, and grief swirling within you be the moments when you pause to listen to consider, to seek out how God is calling you to lean into the new life that God is nurturing in your midst. Dearest PPC family, I will readily admit that I haven't devoted myself to prayer very well in the last several weeks. I've tried in fits and starts to pay attention to God's presence, but I'm all too aware of how those calendars and to-do lists have been clouding my attention. Yet as we prepare to say goodbye, I do want to leave you today with a few reflections on what I have witnessed during my years with you when I have been in a posture of prayer, when I have managed to muster the discipline to pay attention to what God is doing in your midst. I've witnessed much. This isn't an exhaustive list. We'd be here all week. It's an illustrative one. I've witnessed the love and compassion of Christ flowing through you as you have cared for one another publicly. I've seen your commitment to caring for one another lived out as you have mailed, personalized, and in many cases, handmade care packages to college students. I've seen it lived out as you've delivered meals and so many smiles and so much presence of God 
to those experiencing major life challenges. You've nourished our family after two births. Thank you. I've seen your commitment to care lived out publicly as you have hosted and attended memorial services for so many saints, both those who were well beloved and those who made relationships challenging at times. You've loved and cared for them all. And you've done it in quieter, more private ways as well. When you learn through a chance encounter at the grocery store that this person or that has an upcoming medical test, you not only call the pastor, you put it on your calendar to call that person a couple days after the test. You check in. Nobody made you. You just do it. And you've cared privately by sharing openly your struggles, the struggles of your children, not keeping up the facade that we're perfect, but sharing how we are all people in this together. I've witnessed Christ's passion for justice and peace flowing through you as you have served countless homemade meals at the women's shelter, as you have walked and ran in pursuit of healing and wholeness for people with autism and many other life challenges, as you have engaged challenging issues like racism with humility and openness, seeking to learn and grow God's vision for creation, and as you have dared to be in mutual relationship with people experiencing poverty through Project Shine, and I have witnessed the joy and hope that God intends for all people as countless volunteers have helped the stories of our faith come alive for our children. As children have gathered around that baptismal font and danced when they discovered their reflection. As I have looked up from that baptismal font after the baptism of both my children to see the welcome of God gleaming in your eyes. As young and old alike have stood in this pulpit or in this sanctuary and through words or through silence affirmed and celebrated how God has touched their lives. And as the familiar strains of Silent Night have echoed in these walls and made your candlelit faces. I told you. <laughs> Cry. All of these things are evidence of the Holy Spirit alive in your midst, just as Jesus Christ promised, saying, You will be baptized with the Holy Spirit, and you will have power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. All of these memories and more will go with me and they'll strengthen me for the next chapter ahead and I am grateful. And it's also my deep hope and fervent prayer that these memories, that all the memories and moments we have shared will bless and strengthen you as well. Follow where God is calling you next. I hope that they will inspire you to continue the challenging work before you to follow where God calls to devote yourselves to prayer, to pay attention to what God is asking of you. Maybe so, by the power, the mystery, and the blessing of God. Thanks be to God. Amen.